What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? It is very easy to lowball an underrated character like Grob because you be like, oh, he's just a gorilla. He ain't that strong. Why is he even a Flash villain? But look, I think it's actually important for the lore that he is a Flash villain, and I think it's the writer's intent for him to be that powerful because he's not really dependent on his physical strength. He does have some decent physical strength, but that's not the reason why he's been giving Flash all these issues, and I will dissect that the more this video goes on and how strong he is. His telepathic and intelligence is what his main attribute is and why he's such a threat. But before I go any farther, thank you all that have donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. He has been a member of many organizations throughout DC lore, but he's mainly a Flash villain. His enemies are the Flash family, the rogue Solovar, that other gorilla, the Wonder Dog. He was affiliated with the Legion of Doom, Secret Society of Supervillains, Injustice League, stuff like that. His main thing that he shines at is his telepathic ability and his intelligence. Like I already said, he is from Gorilla City. But let's dig into the feats, shall we? First of all, we're not going to act like he's not strong. He was able to make this wall created by Firestorm. I actually do have a video about Firestorm. So yeah, he can break the brick walls with ease. And believe it or not, he's stronger than what a normal gorilla could be able to do. Like, that should be obvious, right? Plenty of fights with Flash. You're going to see this be a constant thing in this vid. He runs Nightwing and Flash through a wall. Keep in mind that he's constantly giving Flash issues. There was this giant spoon. He used a giant spoon to decapitate this robot. Like, let me just throw you through a wall because I'm that strong. Yes, he can pick up cars and even throw them through the bit. Like, he literally threw, <laughs> he threw it that hard. Cement mixers, get tossed, I'm strong. Throws this large column at the flash, just picking up heavy stuff. Yawn, police cars. Come on, man, y'all really think y'all gonna hold him in a normal prison transport? Breaks out. Probably one of his best striking feats of all time. He knocked out Darkseid's eldest son, Calabac. Yes, you are seeing that correctly, Calabac. He beat the living snot out of Geoforce physically. Like, dude, do you know how strong Geoforce is? Geoforce is a being that has power of earth, but he can lift up boulders this big with his strength, so he's no lightweight. Geoforce can contain explosions using his gravity wave. Beams, might I add. The most impressive thing is about his attack potency or attack power, how much energy he can produce. When he at full power, he's kind of dangerous. He was able to cause tremors all over the globe. Shift in the Earth's axis, it says. The U.S. Geological Survey detected. Even when the earthquake stops, the country still trembles. He's evidently even bulletproof. Proof of that here, Geoforce. But yet, him being bulletproof didn't stop Grodd from doing this to him. Yeah, Grodd's a physical beast. Don't forget that in a fit of rage, Grodd can destroy buildings just by pounding on it because he's having a temper tantrum. Was able to slam flash through multiple concrete walls like this. He says, dang it, Grodd, buildings collapsing and it's still full of people. People always say he sucks, man, but you can say what you want about his battle feeds. He's slugging it out with Wonder Woman, taking multiple hits from Wonder Woman without instantly being KO'd. I mean, this makes sense to his lore. He's fighting Flash, too. He's even fought Wally's kids, took an attack from Wally's kids, consistently fighting Speed Force users. He has to be faster than light when it comes to combat speed. He got blitzed by Wally, multiple hits, of course, but he's able to endure it. I mean, he's fought Flash on too many occasions, but Wally West hit him with a whole bunch of blows. A thousand times, two thousand, three times. He even stated, did you think uh, even a million cis taps could hurt me? After all, I am a gorilla. Definitely not a normal gorilla, Grodd. These is what you would call fights that are not necessarily scuffles. At this point, I wouldn't even call them scuffles. They seem to be pretty serious. I'm not necessarily saying Wally is fighting him his absolute hardest, but he is fighting him pretty serious. Grodd was weakened with some drugs. He had to electrocute him by using his intelligence in this occasion. Yeah, I would show L's too. Took the L's from Flash too. There's this being known as Fallout. He produces radiation, energy projection type stuff. He shot Grodd with it and he was not dead from this. He was breaking out of Iron Heights prison. Flash is doing attacks on, like like always, consistently fighting Flash. Seems like nothing really slows him down. Get out of my way like a tank. Guys, how many times am I going to have to show you him fighting Flash for you to respect him? He's got to be at least in the medium heavyweight tiers. I'm sorry. At least up there with Starfire or something, right? Isn't that fair? I mean, tossing him away. Do you seriously think we can call every single occasion of him fighting Flash and giving Flash a struggle? Bad writing when it's clearly intent for him to get a Flash a hard time on this many occasions? Like, consistently fighting on par with the flash being able to react to his speed not equal to his speed but fast enough to react to his speed should be something that should be noted and this occasion with the powerful mighty geoforce being a being that can produce moon busting force at least his fart powerhouses before too geoforce but that's none of my business he got crushed by this little crack in the floor Grodd didn't die from this i just want to make something clear i'm not saying that he's physically on the level of wonder woman physically physically he's still not on her level but it's the other stuff mixed with it but i haven't got to like his telepathic abilities and his telekinesis this is what is the equalizer i would say <laughs> Oh, 
Grodd is such a threat that Wally West, in order to even knock him out, he had to like really put it in the power, like knock him to another city for him to even knock him out. He had to put real effort in the fight, as you can see. Let me walk you through this. It says, over 1,500 miles back to Keystone. Time to build up some momentum. I'll probably break my hands, maybe in wrist. Could even suffer a compound fracture if I do this wrong. Kind of like an internal clock with us. We run, we just, well, we just know how fast we're going. Going through Phoenix, I'm approaching the speed of sound. Do it, I'm moving 10 times as fast. I leap into the air, but my fists together and i pray i don't bite my own tongue road house i'm about to show some of his reaction time feats but before i go any farther i want to give like a couple theories on the matter there's a few ways you can look at this you can say grod is just that fast to be able to react to flash consistently or flash is just holding back massively like literally not even going fast and light at all to fight him because he's got morals that could be true as well but it could be that flash is fighting pretty seriously and he is going Fast and light when he's fighting him, but Grodd is using all his assets to his advantage, like his telepathic abilities. Regardless of how you look at it, if it's any of these factors, if it's just his raw speed, if it's him using his telepathic abilities to predict his next move, whatever way you want to say it, using telepathic abilities to scramble his brain to where he can't blitz him as efficient as he would like, it's something is making him to be able to react to him or take blitz from Flash on a consistent basis. The lore is there, guys. The writer intent is there. It's not just bad writing every single panel of Flash struggling with this guy. I mean, after a while, the Flash will be like, okay, I know how powerful this guy is, but yet Flash still struggles, even though he's fought him plenty of times, yet he struggles every time, right? I mean... If characters like Wonder Woman can't outright knock him out, what makes you think Flash can just one shot knock him out? You know what I mean? If anything on this side, you got endurance and durability and pain tolerance, right? On top of the telepathic abilities. But let me stop rambling. He even be countering surprise attacks. And yes, he's very smart. He caught the Flash on this occasion in their fight, grabbed him, tags Wally West in their fight. Pretty sleepy looking. Getting blitzed by Wally West. Still able to catch his leg again. Grabbed Wally and ran through multiple buildings like I showed earlier. It was a strength feat and a reaction feat. Because he's fighting Flash. Every feat is a reaction feat when fighting Flash. Flash always is using his super speed. <laughs> it's only natural if he's always catching Flash. He should be able to just catch Black Canary. Don't forget, Black Canary is pretty quick in her own right. Even though she's in those super soldier tiers. She's still insanely quick. Even evidently having nanosecond reaction time. Sparring a holding back Wonder Woman, of course. Holding back. Now, we get into the crazy stuff. His telepathic abilities. He was able to make other creatures sentient. It states here, Gride touched my mind, gave me the knowledge of myself. I had only walked amid the trees. Now I know the roots. I think he treats us like servants. He desires only revenge against humans. This is why I was talking about earlier how he uses mind to be the equalizer. Paralyzes Flash and tags him with it. With his telepathic abilities, he was able to build an army of animals. He even straight up mind controlled Vixen into fighting for him. He made Vixen knock out the Flash. Forces a whole bunch of beings, even Supergirl, to worship him. Thanks to that dark talisman he got on. After absorbing minds of other gorillas, his telepathic abilities is even up there with Martian the Manhunters. Power that grows exponentially with each new mind I absorb. Soon I will be far above you. Able to get into Hector Hammond's mind. <laughs> Look at that big old head. That's right. He even defeated Superman by making him see Kryptonite. The mind is a powerful thing. Your mind believes it sees Kryptonite. And so your body reacts as if exposed. I'm killing you with your own mind, Superman. That is crazy, bruh. Even when you imprison him, he can telepathically communicate with his supporters. You're never safe. And here you got here, of course, him telepathically attacking Flash. You see like a little avatar purple construct. Psionic energy, I'm assuming. Just mentally abusing the Flash, man. This is just crazy. In one of their mini fights. Poor Flash. Like, he's doing all of this in his head. Like, ow. He made the other gorillas with his telepathic abilities free the other inmates. Abracadabra. He can make his own army of gorillas. Look at that blitz from Flash. It states here, gorillas under psychic control. Communicates with forces from his base with his telepathic ability. It does it to Bart's heads. Yet again, fighting speedsters, of course. He really knows how to use his telepathic ability. Fighting these speedsters. Oh, this hurts my soul. Hurting my boy Nightwing. Mind smashes him with the psionic little avatar right there. Doing so against Nightwing. Biting Flash. Giving Flash issues like always. His telepathic ability is enough to restrain multiple speedsters. Jay Garrett, Wally, and even Spin. He made Wally think he killed Iris. It was literally like World War Three over here. And Grodd says, I'm going to make all of you stop fighting because of tele telepathy. Stop fighting. 
Lay down your weapons and cease fighting. You are too tired to fight any longer. Made them tired. Speaking of telekinesis, he can use his telekinesis with unison of his telepathic abilities. So like he could be attacking your mind, messing up your speed while you're blitzing him. And then he can trap you under some freaking debris like he does this to spin. He can even create force fields doing so. He can even use it as a form of blast power like doing this to destroy a layer with his telekinesis. Like kind of like the force. Almighty pushes Wally back. He can pick up stuff and... Slam them, poor rats. Why you gotta do this to them, Grot? One of his most impressive feats, being able to match a Green Lantern's ring with his telekinetic blast. This definitely concretes him in the medium heavyweights, at least, because Hal Jordan is a black hole level being, or any Green Lantern for that matter. It states here, Grot has enormous power of mind, but he isn't throwing it at me. He's parrying my force. And Matching a Green Lantern and Flash? Okay, so not only has he fought Flash on a million occasions and gave him a run for the money, so now his telekinesis can block attacks from freaking Green Lanterns? Wait, wait don't forget. I have Green Lantern videos, plenty of them, by the way, if you don't, if you think I'm exaggerating. But Green Lanterns, in general, have always been able to, to produce star level types of force, black holes levels of force, solar system shattering levels of force consistently. Yes, I know this is Kyle Rayner, but Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner have similar levels of power. If he can do this to Hal Jordan, he can do this to Kyle Rayner. It's the kind of the same thing. You know what I mean? Supernovas and that type of thing. Something that should be impressive. I'm just saying. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that many battle feats that I would like, though. But he does have some pretty freaking good intelligence. You're probably wondering how intelligent. I mean, he already has ridiculous telekinesis or psionic abilities. But he built a machine to enhance it even further. How to use them brains. He was able to create collars that was able to restrain characters like Flash from using their powers. Even characters like Vixen and Pied Piper. He built a base around a spatial anomaly. Don't you love the prep time and thoroughness in his investigations? Naturally, he has to build a freeze ray because it's only smart. You're fighting a fast person. Freezing slows him down. You got more lore. It says, can't hold this shield. Yeah, it lets you know the power of Grodd in them. You gotta respect it. Kneel before Grodd. <laughs> he has a pretty decent knowledge on the human brain in his study. Him has given him an aptitude for android technology. You are under my control. You gotta respect him when you got feats like this doing this to Flash. Feats like this doing this to Supergirl, being able to absorb enough minds to be able to overpower Martian Manhunter's mental ability, and even do this to Superman, even defeating him by making him see Kryptonite with his ridiculously strong telepathic abilities. So it's almost like you have to be in denial to call him street level or super soldier tier at this moment. He has to be way past those super soldier tiers. He's definitely in the medium powerhouse. I mean, when Green Lantern say they got a focus to keep their barrier up from his energy shields or, in, or telekinetic blasts, I'm just saying. What if I told you even back in the day, Grodd had a, a vehicle known as the Quadromobile, a remarkable four-way vehicle that travels through the air on the ground, underwater, and through the earth. My thoughts are tuned to the controls of the Quadromobile. Follow my thought impulses come to me. <laughs> That's funny. Look at it. It looks cool. Doesn't it? No matter how old the comments, it seems like Grodd had ridiculous strength. Always. Powerful shoulders sent him flying. I still got my super strength flash. You'll never capture me. He ignites the oxygen in the air as he passes. Hit him with the force and he's still standing. It's like he didn't even freaking move. That's something you got to respect for Mr. Grodd. Grodd has mind transference. Like he can literally take over somebody's body and like literally another person can't even control their body no more. Like it's just my body now as stated here. I'm temporarily occupying this human body. It's the strange thing about that, right? His gorilla mind is so powerful. He mentally was able to revert back to a gorilla form even though he was in a human body. This is the theory of humans used to be gorillas in evolution so they're de they're saying he's devolved back to what humans used to be right for i just think that's epic that he can mind transfer like say if this gorilla body dies he can just take over a random human and just take over their life basically and turn into an another gorilla right but believe it or not in the new 52 run he's more closely related to the flash lore in my opinion because his whole reason for having his power is that all the apes of gorilla city possess their accelerated physical and mental abilities Due to their society's interactions with the quantum phenomena known as the actual freaking speed force. So, the reason why he's a beast is because of Flash's energy source in the first place. In New 52. So I think this is kind of unique. When you say, Grodd states, I do feel the power of light surging through the human. He's talking about the speed force, energies, things of that sort. Other gorillas have mental gifts in this universe. Like this is very... The lore in New 52 is very interesting. Like their whole existence revolves around the speed force type stuff. They call it the light. Even in the New 52 era, when Barry realized who he finally was, does a barrage of punches, Grass seems to eat it. Durability is always good. <laughs> yeah. Even goes as far as says, you can't hurt me. That durability though, he says you might be right. That's ridiculous physical strength. Even able to almost, almost bring the whole cave down. Caves, they're collapsing because of his attack power. 
raw blunt strength. Further exposure to the Speed Force, Grise got Speed Force, like, he speaks the type of abilities, like, in New 52. Now, this is, it gets even more crazier. The other gorillas are even confused. They say, like, you have telepathy, like the elders. How is that possible? You are not nearly old enough. Rod explains he evolved during his time in the Speed Force, Solovar. How the light sped up my evolution. I am now what you could never be in a thousand lifetimes. Imagine Grod with speed. Grod is going so ham, even his own gorilla kind is thinking he's tripping. <laughs> Pimp slaps. Get murk. Get murk. Get murk. Who wants some? He still has telepathic resistance, even though he has speed force power. Solovar tries to get inside his mind. That doesn't work. Yes, Solovar has telepathic abilities in this universe. Get out my freaking way. He uses telekinesis to do that. It's implied he still has telepathic power. This causes all this ruckus, this helicopter explosion. They try to team up on him. That does not go freaking well. He's got too much power at this point. So Gorilla Grodd being able to actually travel at the speed of light. The level that Grodd is on is at entirely new height. Being able to keep up with Flash and raw combat speed. Any version of Flash, massively faster than light. They even have this occasion here. Flash is running. He's running after him. You can see them blitzing. And Grodd is no slow poking in comparison. The lightning around him and everything. The weird part is about Grodd is that he's literally a war. Fighting Flash with this ridiculous level of speed, reacting to him. Now he actually does have the speed force power. We got some lore of Grodd when it comes to the speed force in this era. Over the course of recorded history, the speed force has lasted out many times. It has destroyed civilizations and redirected the course of Earth's history. I was the first to directly feel its touch and from the first moment I did, I saw it all. When I was struck, I saw the past and I saw a course set from the future. A course that would lead to darkness for all. So I decided to act. With a heavy heart, I abandoned my burgeoning guerrilla civilization. Use my mind and gifts, I transcended space and time. My mission, jump ahead along the continuum and deliver a message that could save our future. But I arrived too soon. Putting that work in, literally had to flash on the ropes. About to murk him. God dang. That awkward moment where he got like a legit win this time for sure. He didn't have speed force powers the entire run. There were occasions where he didn't have it. In this occasion, for the Aquaman, he was just straight up normal at the moment. But... His physical strength seems to still be supreme. A slugfest with Aquaman in the New 52 era himself. Like, not getting one-shotted. You can't tell me this guy ain't got physical strength. Fly sends him flying. He takes a punt. Yeah, but Aquaman starts to overwhelm him in physical strength. He needs all his abilities to be able to really fight him, really, like he should. If you knew how strong Aquaman is, you would know this is not really embarrassing considering Aquaman's strength. Evidently, in the Rebirth era, Legrade once again found a way to gain some type of speed force abilities by stealing the Flash speed force energy. It states here, give me the speed force. It seems to be very intelligent still. Gorilla technology with black coal was necessary to develop the lightning that will draw forth the speed force and save my life. Once his speed force to save his life and the benefit of being faster too, right? That's for those that still don't really think Grodd is impressive, this is what Flash has to say about him. Grodd is more dangerous than anything you've encountered. And he's got to be a threat to him. I'm just saying. Don't want to sound like a broken record though, guys. Uses his telepathic abilities to mess him up in the mind, to really incapacitate him, make him see these messed up things, or mess his focus up, one would say. Tie him up, and siphon off his energy, because we're smart, a real who you are, without your powers. What a crushing defeat. States that Grodd is as scary as they come. Is the reason why you keep seeing Grodd eat people's brains in this vid is because, or wants to eat people's brains because they get their knowledge of the people they eat, stuff like that. And this is some lore you can read out loud about how their mental collectives work in this run. Also in the Rebirth era, he was able to be a steel force conduit. After telepathically connecting to this being known as Turtle, he was able to access the Steel Force, a cosmic force that controls the negation of kinetic energy. And the Grodd just keeps on surprising, don't he? Here's what they had to say about the Steel Force. It's universe-ending stuff. Does this to leaguers with the power. Being a Steel Force conduit has the power to negate all motion around him. Flash getting handled in this occasion. It says they're powering the Steel Force, and then it gets blasted. <laughs> this is a scary sight. Grodd having control of forces like this that, that they call universe-ending stuff. I know I've been talking about powers a lot but even without any speed force abilities and conduit of the steel force stuff like that he has skills enough to fight even his own father in mortal combat style like yeah the traditions over here is crazy ain't it his weapon skills to be able to use these different type of weapons to fight people that have similar strength to him in ruthless fashion his own father you people gonna learn today no speed force stuff just raw strength fighting wonder woman just saying it's so strange seeing wonder woman in this outfit all the graphic gorilla outfits are you serious let me stop let me get on track no goes in for the slugfest style but he knows he's not really a match for her physically just enough to hang in there just enough 
right? But he uses his telepathic abilities to even the odds, right? My lasso lets only the truth pass. One, no, seriously, look at this Wonder Woman outfit. I'm done. She literally punches him in the face. He punches back, makes her bleed. She t gets another punch. They are literally having a straight slugfest. But Grodd ain't no beast, though. So not only is he fighting Flash-level characters, Green Lantern characters, and now even one woman tier characters. Like, when does the underratedness stop? Probably, even though he did that Green Lantern stuff in the post crisis era, but you get the point. He's always fighting Flash no matter what era. Now, Wonder Woman's added to the list. Heck, he even slugged it out with Wonder Woman in the other era, even though she had clearly had the advantage, right? Yeah. But I don't want to overhype him. Yes, he's still not a match for her physically, though. That needs to be noted. But yeah, guys, he's hanging in there with these guys with his other abilities mixed in there. Not to mention, Grodd evidently even allied his forces with Poison Ivy. Grodd and his forces attack freaking damage, you know, DC's version of Hulk. But of course, damage is stronger than these gorillas, of course, because he's a Superman tier. For, I mean, he fought Superman for like nearly a freaking hour. You know how long fighting Superman for a freaking hour is and how impressive that is? Grodd. We just want to ignore how Grodd was able to freeze damage in his tracks. You can't move. Grodd was even going to go as far as to use damage as his weapon or instrument of strength and destruction completely under his control, but instead Poison Ivy flipped the ties because she didn't want to be the villain, stuff like that. Interrupting the process, then does this, does this, try to take out Grodd. Didn't go too well. Grodd's bleeding. Goodness gracious. In physical battles, he's not ready for these guys. But he ain't no flea, though, in freaking comparison. But that is just about going to do it, everybody. I hope this video really showed you how underrated Grodd is. He's a lot stronger than people think. I would say he's definitely in those Starfire ranges of power, at least. Consistent threat for Flash, being able to react to him. If not being able to react to him, can, be, can use telepathy to maybe predict his next moves, to really slow down his reflexes, or use his mind hacks to really cripple the Flash in these occasions against higher level opponents, stuff like that. He was a conduit for different things. He uses intelligence to his advantage. Prep time, he's dangerous. If he gets more screen time, he will be probably one of the best villains ever. But he's underutilized, in my personal opinion. Hopefully, we get to see an epic live-action, high-budget version of him in the future, in the DCU, maybe. Fingers crossed. Post some comments down below. Let me know what you all think. How did you guys like this? This was a nightmare to make, but I do this for y'all, and I enjoy it. Make sure you check out those playlists so you can see more stuff like this. If I'm being honest, him being able to match a straight-on beam from Hal Jordan and literally stop it in his tracks or make Hal Jordan struggle should make him have enough telekinetic blast power to be able to blast away at least 80 herbs. I mean, think about a star. I mean, Hal Jordan has to be able to blast away a star. That's equivalent to over hundreds of herbs. You know what I mean? Grodd can more than likely do the same if he can match these telekinetic beams from Hal Jordan. Check out my Hal Jordan and Green Lantern videos for more proof of this. To know that I'm not crazy and I'm not just making stuff up. <laughs> you can, or you can just Google yourself, what is the power of a supernova explosion? <laughs> you can see what I'm talking about. But I'll see you guys later though. Respect Grodd.